All you have to do is close your eyes and listen. Welcome to episode 31 of TSGG Chat. I'm your host, Kevin Bork. This week, we have a very special episode. This is our 2018 Holiday Shopping Guide, the last minute edition. We should, we should have like little sleigh bells in the background during this whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> As you can hear, there are people with me this week. They are Kaylee. Hi, Kaylee. Hello. And Jake. Hey, what Jake. up? <laughs> Sign up with us over at tsgg.online. Follow us on Twitter at the SosGG. Subscribe to us over at youtube.com slash the society. Watch us live on twitch.tv slash TSGG online. And you can get early access to most of everything that we do and exclusives over at patreon.com slash TSGG. Everything that you contribute will help further our cause. This week is a week before Christmas. Oh, yes. And if you're a procrastinator like most of us and you're struggling to think, mm, what do I get my favorite gamers in our in my life? Then this is a list for you. Yeah. So next year we were going to get this episode up much earlier and this will become an annual episode so that we can help out parents and friends that want to purchase video game related gifts and See that ungrateful child actually smile for once. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. So, yeah, this is a week before Christmas, and we're hoping to get it up maybe, what, November? Maybe do a November-ish episode. Yeah, Early probably, November pre, sounds good. probably pre-Black Friday. Yeah, try to get that up. That way we can also post some Black Friday deals while we talk about it. This right, yeah, that'd be a good idea. So this idea actually came from Kaylee, so all the credit goes to you for this. Thank you. And I thought it was a really, really cool idea to pursue. So uh, let's get right into it. We're going to focus on the three major players of the industry, and they are Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony. And if your person that you're shopping for is a PC gamer, I'm sorry. There is <laughs> nothing we can check, do to help check you. Check Steam out. Steam has some great sales. Steam, and then they have some, like, you could go to a lot of places Epic has their new game store. But if you guys are interested, I do have some websites, places to go, things to look for. You can reach Jake over on Twitter <laughs> and he can steer you in the right direction yeah. for PC games. Put us up on the social GG, Will. He is part of the master race. Somewhat. <laughs> Used to be. Now I'm decrepit and old with it. Also, if you happen to buy <laughs> little Cindy or Johnny a nice shiny <laughs> tablet for Christmas... You will find that thousands of games exist on these devices. And I want to warn you right now that this is something you want to pay attention to. And that is your settings for in-app purchases. Don't ever. Make sure <laughs> that you require a password for an in-app Always. purchase. Or your precious little walking virus might <laughs> rack up a bill that will cost you more than three times the amount of the device itself. Most of these tablet games follow the same formula. They give you a taste of the game, just enough to get your interest, and then they give you a very short amount of time you can play it. They then offer you to pay with real money to get more time added to your playtime. Now, the way I'm explaining it is as simple as I can. I assure you that these game makers work very hard to disguise the words I just said behind flashy animations and items. This is why it's very important to go into the tablet settings and make sure... Your in-app purchases need verification of some sort. That would be scary. Okay, my disclaimer is over. Yep. With that in mind, there are some notable games. One that I immediately go towards is Pokemon Go. That's yep. a really good game. I've played many hours of it. That's available on phones, tablets. 
It encourages exercise, but you don't have to. And there's a rumored PvP mode coming. Actually, it released. Trainer Battles. Oh, it looks like I'm going back into Pokemon Go right now. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, we here at TSGG covered another one, Dragalia Lost hey. by Nintendo. And Kaylee and- plays many tablet oh, games of the cooking I, I go, variant. I go back. Glue has um, GLU. They have two different games based out the old Diner Dash games. Um, they have Cooking Dash, which is pretty fun. It does offer in-app purchases, but you don't need to pay to in order to win. You can watch a couple commercials and keep it free. It's just as much as what you want to keep doing. You can earn gold. Um, I've been playing it for several years now, and it's just it's a quick tap-tap game. It activates all the little bells and whistles in my brain to keep me entertained for a while. Um you can't go wrong with like Bejeweled Blitz, things like that, if you want time, little time wasters. Um, some of these things that you also have to be can be aware of is that they require internet access in order to play. Um, there's another Pokemon game that I tried playing, but I can't do it because I don't have regular internet access when I have the downtime in order to play it. So um, just be aware of what your, your settings are for your mobile device and what you're willing to do. But Yeah, because the last thing you want is... A ridiculously large bill coming your way. Yeah, or if you don't have reliable internet access and it's an online only game, that also bites as well. Yep. So now that we got that out of the way, let's head into the major three players and we'll start with Microsoft. So we're going to start with the consoles that are available and then some of the peripherals that we like and then some of the online services and then some of the games that we think would be best for you to get for your family or individuals. I was going to so, say, or you yourself. Or you yourself, yes. Never forget be to selfish. reward yourself. <laughs> so the Xbox One S, one terabyte system is 199 and the this system comes in various bundles. And it also has a 4K Blu-ray player on it. Um, they do have a stronger one. The Xbox One X, one terabyte, is on sale through the holidays for three ninety nine, and this is usually a four ninety nine machine. Various bundles here as well. So I think that's the recommendation now, though. I mean, the X. You might as well get the X because the S is okay. It gives you the four K quality that you that you get. Cause I think that gives you like a four K native or something like that. The X does. Yeah. The X plays 4K native, 60 frames per second. It is the most powerful console on the market right now. I mean, if you want to impress yourself with a gift for yourself, might as well get it for yourself. I have to say it's a very small console, and I really, really like the look of it. It's very slim and sleek and pretty looking. I'm not a fan of the boxes. No? Mm -mm. I just I wasn't a fan of the original Xbox One, but this one I really like the design. I of prefer it. the design of the Xbox 360, honestly. If you want to talk about designs, like the 360, had, well, you're a curve guy. Yeah, the, I love the 360 the curves. has the curves. <laughs> I like the fact that this one doesn't take up a huge amount of space. Correct, so if you yeah. have a limited amount of space in your residence or in your console collection, like we have, um, this it's compact. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. small, but it is really heavy. It's a yeah, solid that, machine. that was surprising when, when we got ours. So controllers for the Xbox, one cost $60. And if you go to Microsoft's website, they have the Xbox Design Lab, which allows you to customize your controller's colors all the way down to buttons. And they are $10 off their prices for the holidays. So check those out. Also be advised, it does require real batteries. So yes, it's not a plug-in. You actually have to have real batteries for this one. Definitely suggest getting the long-lasting uh, gamer-style lithium rechargeable. The lithium one, yep. And they probably These have battery two packs you can purchase. Double too, A's. I haven't seen any, but they could be out there. But the lithium ones, like these, are uh, low usage devices, so you're going to get plenty of hours. I've put the lithium into the xbox controller I don't that we had the last and I don't... time you recharged it either but we also don't play it every well, we day. don't recharge them but these are just the lithium ones the non-rechargeable mm-hmm. so they're still going strong so they last and the device itself is smart enough to turn itself off so that's also a nice feature so let's talk about the service for a moment uh, we have 
Xbox Live Gold, and this they offer the three month for twenty four ninety nine, and a twelve month subscription for fifty nine ninety nine. Xbox Live Gold you will need if you want to play games online with your friends, and they also Xbox Live Gold also has numerous discounts available for their Xbox Live subscribers. So 60 bucks for a year, which is what we here recommend that you get mm-hmm. if you're going to be playing any games online, which in today's age, most of the games you're going to play are online. Not only that, like it also, like it's just the same as a PlayStation. You'll get multiple, like you'll get multiple deals just for having it. You'll get so many things that come with it that are too, like too beneficial not to have. Yeah. I mean, I don't really play my Xbox much, but I, I bought the gold because it just needed to happen. Like I needed yeah. to have that, those extra two games just in case whatever the hell they are came out. And- when, when you get the console, you factor this in as well. This is a day one purchase you're going to want to get. They give you a free month so you can see what it's all about. You can read all the details on their website, right. on the console itself. They'll walk you through it, and you do get two free games every month that you can add to your library right. that you can keep digitally forever as long also as you remember, are a subscriber. Remember to add them yes, to the library. Remember to put them on because if you don't add them, they don't stay. This is true, but okay. the service itself is something that everybody's going to want to get. So let's talk about some of the games for Xbox. We have. Sunset Overdrive by Insomniac. I heard that was a good game. Yes, this is like a open world sandbox type, very like action shooter, colorful multiplayer game, colorful zombie game. I think it yeah. was was what it is. Like it's a very colorful, very vibrant world. Lots These of the, lots of graffiti art. The makers of Ratchet and Clank series, <laughs> and more recently, with their blockbuster hit Spider Man. Which uh, which age group do you think this would appeal to? Sunset Overdrive is teen. I was gonna say it's probably probably low teen all the way up. Yeah. Like it's because it's not like I don't think it's very complicated, and the zombies and stuff don't aren't really like super gory. It's it's all very like bubbly looking. Yeah, it's colorful. Yeah. Quantum Break. That was a Microsoft exclusive. Mm-hmm. The Rare Replay. Rare Studios is owned by Microsoft. This is a 100% recommendation to anybody who who, who wanted to teach their children, little Jimmy, Jeremy, or Anna, uh, teach any of them what it means to be an old school gamer because you get everything with this. We're talking like Conker's Bad Fur Day. Pretty sure there's some other titles. Like I, I want to say Donkey Kong's in there, but I don't think I'm right. No. You know what's missing? Mm. Diddy Kong Racing is missing. <laughs> telling you that right now. Nintendo 64. Uh, Sea of Thieves is in for the Xbox. This is one that I think this is a multiplayer game. So you're gonna uh, be playing with real people. Yeah, this is an open world PvP adventure game, and but they've it's been car- working it's on it. Kind of cartoonish. Yeah, very cartoonish. This is also by Rare. This is what they've been working on for Microsoft. Uh, this is an Xbox One exclusive. And Xbox and PC, but yeah. PC, yeah. Well, Microsoft, PC, Xbox, they're all, that's the same. So, yeah, this is an open world pirate adventure that you can hang out with your friends and go do pirate stuff and fight skeletons. Jake, you fought some skeletons, right? I did. And okay, I, I turned it right off. <laughs> uh, so, as this is an online service game, they have constantly been releasing free updates to it. So,. I recommend anybody that played it when it first came out and may like not me. have had a good time to revisit it. How uh, how abusive is the online community? Uh, it's pretty abusive because you're pirates. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because, yeah. like, you could you could literally like, like you could go in with a whole group of people with the biggest boat that you have and you par- park an island to do some type of quest, and then immediately some guy has been trailing you since probably the the last shore that you parked on, and all his whole goal is to rob you of your riches and destroy your ship. Like, that's the whole thing. It's like, I want to get everything that you have. Right, but the... I'm talking about more like... There's a ton know of how griefing. Like, you, you know you have, like, a Call of Duty bros that rage. There, I mean, I, I don't... I've never really been in that community enough to see people rage, but there was a, a massive amount of griefing. So, I mean, we're talking, like, every single... But it, like I said, it's about pirates, so it makes sense. Like, you... We parked. We parked in a in a small port, 
and we were just doing missions, taking all the stuff that we received and trying to sell it. Someone parked right on the other side of the sh- shore. So what happened was pretty much we'd run to try to sell stuff, but we'd had to meet in the middle because these guys kept just trying to run over and take our, our stuff from our boat. Like that was our main, their main goal was to just continuously grab all of our treasure. And then we had to kill them. Yes. On shore. Like pirates do. Like pirates do. So that's one that your loved ones may like. I'm very interested in it. I'm going to be checking it out soon. Age so, group? I would say it's, you know, anybody could play it. That's that's for anybody. Yeah, that's yeah, everyone. Anybody could really play it. It's 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 another vibrant game. Open world adventure game. The only problem is, obviously, you're still subjected to the community. So, the PvP is yeah. never going away. They've already said that. So. Yep, so. Up next, we got State of Decay 2. That's a zombie shooter, survival game. Our review for that is actually on our website, tocg.online, mm-hmm. if you want to check that out. Done by Brennan. Done by Brennan. And he had very high praise for that game. Uh, this one, I would say, is for adult teens. Maybe. I don't think it's mature. But no. I would say definitely adult teens. Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest. That is a platforming game, and you can check out our TSGG Rewind video of this on YouTube at youtube.com slash society to see it for yourself. This is a platformer that is for everyone. Cuphead. <laughs> This is a platforming adventure action game. If you, uh, if you're a masochist, <laughs> this was made <laughs> in the artistic style of the very old school cartoons. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous game. Oh gorgeous. yeah, frame yeah. by frame, hand drawn. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, the boss not... fights are some of the toughest I've heard on Xbox. So if you really want to get Bobby Sue to be a champion platformer. This is a, uh, it's the gauntlet to go through. And this is also an Xbox exclusive. Train little Susan Young. Make them, yeah. make them know. <laughs> Otherwise they're like, like old lady Kaylee here who cannot <laughs> platform to save her life. If there's a platform, she will fall off of it. She Guaranteed. does. I, I played a little bit of Cuphead. I thought it was fun, but it's And super the music hard. is really cool to oh, that yeah. too. All done by them. Insane. Yeah. Everything yeah. in the house. Next, we have Forza Horizon 4. That came out this year, and I think we have some videos of that on our website We do. Well. We have, yeah, so couple. check those out. We did do that through our first TSGG charity stream. I played ah, yes. It. it was part of the stream as well. I played it. I am not a very good racer type person. As I got to play a little bit longer, it became a little bit easier, but it's that's also a very beautiful, very vibrant game. Um, it's really, any, anybody can play. Oof. This one's not something you're going to have to worry about um, I'm not saying you're going to be good at it, but any ga- any age range can play. Um, Forza is strictly online yeah. too. I believe. You're not going to get yeah. the the people swearing and yelling and stuff for the like the community aspect of it. So it's yeah, it it's is a an online controlled. game. Uh, as a technical standpoint, it's the best graphics I have seen on the Xbox One X. It's beautiful. It's definitely a game that anybody could play, though. I'm pretty sure yeah, that's for everybody. It's a racing game. Yeah. Forza Motorsport Seven. Killer Instinct is on the list. Huh. That's a great fighting franchise. That brings me back. Now that one, I I don't know how that one works because you can get Killer Instinct on on Xbox, but I think you can get it for free, but you have to buy parts of it. You buy the fighters. Yeah, I think that's how it works. But they may have a bundle for all the fighters, so I'm not sure. You'd have to look be. into it. But for fighting fans, Killer Instinct is a series that's been throughout the ages, so it Wasn't continues. Also done to be by good. Rare. I'm not 100% on that one. Jake's going to check on it, and I'm going to continue with the list. Halo, the Master Chief Collection. There you go. This one, you get all of the Halo games until up through four. That sounds about right. Five is not in this. And they were remastered and redone for Xbox One. And they also fine-tuned the multiplayer pvp stuff and everybody is pretty much happy with that and uh, so if you're a halo fan or halo fan is one of your loved ones this is a collection for them gears of war the franchise as a whole i believe all of the games are now on xbox one as well 100 percent not recommended for children no no uh, gears of war definitely not i played i played all the gears of war i'm pretty sure until four so full Oldest teens 
plus. Definitely yeah. for more mature audience. No, I was really interested in the series. So I recommend this to anybody who, who, if they really feel like they want to get into a game, Gears of War built most of their story throughout their comic books, their books, and they introduced people from those universes into the games as they went. Uh, so it's they, they built a lot of stuff. And be prepared, if you ever read the books, to just hear a lot of... A lot of buddies. They say buddy a lot. <laughs> well, thanks, buddy, for that. Uh, next, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And by the way, it was done by Rare. It was done by Rare. <laughs> yep. Killer Instinct. And, and also, Instinct. if you happen to be buying one of the bundles right now in any of the the Xbox bundles, they do have a coupon or a download code for Gears of War. Mm. Okay. Yes. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Square Enix. Crystal Dynamics. I don't know about... I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Fantastic game. I believe we have gameplay footage of this on yes. YouTube as well. Yep. Definitely go check that out. Absolutely it is, stunning. It is stunning. It's not quite at the Forza level, but it's very close behind it. It's wild. Yeah. And finally, for Xbox, let's talk about Xbox Game Pass. So this is something that launched this year. Xbox Game Pass. Right now, they are offering you to get your... This is a subscription service similar to Netflix. For your first month, it's going to require you to pay $1, and you can check it out. And when you do sign up, you you sign up, you create your account, and then your monthly charge is going to recur automatically. And that is $9.99 a month. So for $10 a month, one dollar to sign up, ten dollars a month thereafter, and it automatically will deduct from your account. This is a fantastic service, and it's really highlighted that by Microsoft because every Microsoft exclusive that they have costs sixty bucks, and they are including these in this Game Pass service day one. So it's really like the Netflix of. Game. Of, of gaming. Of Microsoft. Uh, so, the game we talked about, Forza Horizon 4, and how beautiful and how great of a game that is, that is one of the Microsoft exclusives that came out this year. It was on Game Pass Day 1. So, that is actually how I was able to play it, because I'm a Game Pass member, so I had it Day 1, ready to download, and it was on the machine. So, back to talking about those benefits for the xbox this is definitely one of those that would be worth investigating oh yeah because you really have everything that all the microsoft games at your fingertips at your basically as you like to look into the games yeah and as 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 we go along new games are being added every single month and they're not only microsoft games Um, some of the games like for the microsoft exclusives Forza Horizon 4, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, all came out this year, and they're all there on Game Pass for you to play, and they were all there day one. Also, Crackdown 3 is coming next year very early, and that's a day one play as well. Also, uh, Hello Neighbor is on there, Fallout 3 is on there, Sunset Overdrive, a game that we told you about a little while ago, is on there. Devil May Cry, the Definitive Edition, is on there. Recore is on there. That was another Microsoft exclusive. Recently added though, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. Which is an this incredible is a game. Fantastic game. What a game. This is a game that everybody should maybe teen, I would say. Yeah, probably teen yeah. plus. That's definitely a game that I'd recommend to anybody. Especially like it's such a it's such a beautiful cinematic game. They put so much work into that game. I, I watched the development of that game for years. And the amount of work that they put in just to make it look as amazing as it is, it's just um, totally incredible. What I like is the, the, the gems when you watch the director and like the directing stuff for it. Like the mm-hmm. Senua was actually just someone that was part of their staff. Like the, yeah. Yeah. For yeah, it's not she wasn't a professional actress. I think she was like a designer or something like that. Yeah, yeah she was. She was she was just doing some work and then they're like, Yeah, that yeah, there's yeah, cinema. You're, you're it. Yeah. <laughs> so on Game Pass, you can see we've highlighted some things. 
you have everything from indie developers to double A developers, which is what the developers for Sending a Sacrifice was. And also Mortal Kombat X was just announced for Game Pass and it's available now and that's a triple A developer. Is it Mortal Kombat XL? No. XL, yes. So you have everything from indie to triple A and there's over a hundred games on there and they're always expanding. So and if you cannot really, go wrong. If you really think Pass. about it, it's basically the the cost to brand new games for the mm-hmm. whole year. Plus, with Xbox Live Gold, you're getting two games a month for free. So, these are the services that we recommend and the games that we recommend for Microsoft to make people happy. And I don't think you can go wrong with anything on this list. I agree. Up next, we have Nintendo. Okay. So, Nintendo... Expensive, but worth it. Um, we're going to talk about the Nintendo Switch. And the console runs at $299. Um, Joy-Cons are available in various colors, but the red and blue or the charcoal are the two standard colors in, included in the bundle. Um, and there's more peripherals in, in various shades. Um, Nintendo Switch Online, they are offering a free seven-day trial with online multiplayer access, cloud saves, special offers, and there is a smartphone app where you can do your communication and party chat. It also will give you classic NES games and new titles are added regularly. Um, the individual membership runs one month at $3.99, three months is seven ninety nine, twelve 12 months is nineteen ninety nine. But the best feature is the family membership for up to eight Nintendo account accounts and that runs 12 months for 34.99 so eight separate people can be on the same account and you can really get the most out of it yeah and it's important to note here nintendo is the only online service that has a family family membership plan the others are all individual microsoft and sony so keep that in mind if you have multiple nintendo switches in your house the family membership is definitely the one you want to go to. You can connect eight Nintendo Switch accounts on one service. So definitely, there's that's probably got some of the best value there. Um, for peripherals, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is highly recommended. That comes in at $69.99. Um, additional Joy Cons are in various colors at seventy nine ninety nine, but keep an eye out for sales. Um, they were having them on sale not too long ago for I think sixty nine, so it's ten dollars off. Um, it's something to keep in mind if you're if you only have one switch available to you and you want to do party play, you're gonna have to buy the additional Joy Con controllers. Um, so that can be a little bit added uh, added cost. But this does come in $100 cheaper than some of the other consoles. So you're going to kind of break even in comparison if you're playing with multiple people. You don't have to actually buy all the the peripherals, but they're useful depending on how you like to play. Um, Another thing to talk about is the Amiibos. If you're not familiar with them, they're little figurines that can scan into the game. So you actually have a physical little representation of a character and you can have it connect to your game that you're playing and then they'll scan right into the game and these prices vary from ten dollars to twenty five dollars and there's probably about a hundred of them available there's yeah more. more or less yeah but they're always releasing more yeah the, the amiibos are really the probably one of the cooler concepts for the switch because you use them as a as a method to either like in some games you could use them as like a summon like i think in smash bros you can actually summon the characters in yeah in smash bros they're a little bit different because you actually summon the character itself into the game Mm -hmm. and then you take time to level that character up yep so when you scan it in it's not at the same level as the other characters you have to take time and level it up yeah so like but like if you Use certain ones that correlate with different games, like the Breath of the Wild. If you get a certain certain one, you could summon certain things that you would never find in the game. Yeah, I believe with um, the Wolf Link, 
amiibo, you get Wolf you Link. You get Wolf Link yep. in Breath of the Wild. And and if you had taken the time in Twilight Princess to go into the cave and level up Wolf Link, you actually bring those hearts with you. Otherwise, you're like me, and we're stuck with three hearts, which is unfortunate. Sad Link. Sad Link. You could also get Epona. You could get... A yeah, whole I think bunch that of weapons. One was the, um, I think you had like three different things that you regularly scanned in. Didn't yeah, it give you other bonuses? Ganondorf too? one, you can actually get the Sword of the, Sword six, of sages. the six Sages, which is awesome. So uh, the Amiibo give you different things for different games, and most of the Amiibo can be scanned in all of the games. Like, say, Ryu, for example, if you scanned it in Breath of the Wild, Ryu is not going to come in the game, but you may get a treasure chest full of fruit. Who knows? And also, um, if you happen to have like a 3DS, you can scan some of those into the different 3DS games mm-hmm. as well. Right. So it's not just one. It's not just a Switch only. You can use Multiple it. Multiple consoles. Remote, yeah. I think that we it's a really cool too. feature. Um, another thing that can you can get with your to go along with your Nintendo Switch. Um, there's carrying cases. They come in different styles, and some of them are game related. Some of them are kind of plain. Um, and there's also screen protectors because it is a, a portable device, so you might want to have that protected. And if you want to go fancy, you can get skins to decorate your um, your Switch. Mine was pretty much all Breath of the Wild. Yeah, mine is too. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch for a moment. For those of you that do not know what it is, this is a an actual game console that you place into a docking station and plug it into your television and you're playing console quality games. When you want to go on the go and you still want to play console quality games, all you do is lift the switch out of the docking station, the screen turns on and the Joy-Cons are connected to the screen and you now have console quality games on the go. The switch is by far my favorite piece of video game tech since the Super Nintendo. It's so cool. We we play it all the time. Um, it, it, they tried to do something similar with the Wii U, but this is they really nailed it with this. It's it's incredible. Yeah, this is it, the this is the handheld in quotations next gen console. Yeah, you have console quality on the go. It is insane. And with Nintendo peripherals, you say you are sitting around a table and each of us has a Nintendo Switch console that we're playing and we were playing a game like Super Smash Brothers, we can wirelessly connect local. We don't have to be on a wireless network. We can network together and play together, which is a great feature Nintendo has put into their other handhelds and they've brought them over here. And if you're tr- little trophy hunters, some some games have different modes that are activated depending on how, like, if you're playing in a certain direction, if you're doing on the TV screen, or if you're laying it flat, or having a handheld, or connecting with other people. So, there's little bonuses there. To I wasn't that. even aware of that. Yeah, that's a great feature for Nintendo. Like, they don't actually have a trophy or achievement system, but the games put in their own achievement type things inside the software and like super mario party you can actually lay two nintendo switch consoles side by side right and you can go into toad's rec room and you have to change the alignment of the consoles and your characters will move right over to the other screen on the other switch and you continue playing it's really really cool technology hopefully in the next couple of years they really expand on it, and we'll really hopefully see what they are capable of. New Switch. Switch 2. Switch 2 will the Switcheroo. definitely happen. So let's talk about some of the games for Nintendo Switch. Those are the peripherals and accessories and the console. It's a wonderful thing. What oh, games did they and have? the Joy-Cons, before, before we get into that, Joy-Cons slide right onto the side of the Switch itself, so it charges it that way. And yep. they do require USB-C, but that's going to become the new industry standard. So, like, your cell phone, newer cell phones require that instead of the old ones. Yeah. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So some of the games that we have, super, the top four family-oriented games that anybody can play, 
um, Super Mario Party. We have Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Super Mario Odyssey. You cannot go wrong with any of these. They're great for individuals, or if you have um, multiple people, well, you're going to have to have multiple people for Super Mario Party. But um, You can play Super Mario Party by yourself. It, you're playing against AI, which is not ideal, but you still have fun with it if you like the idea of playing a virtual board game with mini games attached to it. I think you should experience it once if you are a fan of board games. You can't really go wrong playing it. Would I tell you to spend $60 to try it? Probably not. I would say look at it to a retailer to see if they have a demo available that you can try. I do not believe Mario Party has a demo on the eShop, so you're not going to find it there. But if you do have multiple people to play, it's a high recommendation because you're going to have a great time. And if you want to see gameplay of it, we actually have that on our YouTube channel. Our last live stream that we did for Extra Life, we played for many, many hours. And we had a blast playing this game. We've actually had, it's been the game that we've been playing the most lately. We've had so many people over just playing, and it's just so fun. Um, we literally, I think, had a four-hour block. It ate up a couple other games that we were going to be playing in our charity stream. Um, but we play it all the time. Somebody emerged as a champion or something. I don't, <laughs> I don't, remember. I don't really remember. Those details are small. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't recall. I don't recall holding the trophy in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, Super Mario Odyssey. That's the that was a surprise to me actually because of another title that she's going to tell you. Uh, this one came out in October of last year and it completely blew me away of how good it was and how it integrates what the switch is right now and incorporates what Mario used to be. You have these retro scenarios in that pop up and is this is a masterfully done game and was my runner up for game of the year last year yeah the story is a little bit shorter but comparing it to other games this is the same level of what super mario 64 did when moving forward in the series super mario odyssey did for the switch and if you want to collect all the moons you're going to get a lot and a lot of game time but the story the story is a little bit on the short side but It's highly recommended. And as far as a 3D Mario game goes, you cannot go wrong with this one. No, so good. So uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I actually do not own this one because I'm holding out for 9, but (laughs) I don't know if it's going to happen or not. I have actually played the demo of this in, in the store, and I've had it in my hand a couple of times, and I just put it down because I'm holding out because... That's how I am. I can picture that. But I can recommend to all of you, if you haven't played Mario Kart since the old days, jump on this game. All of the DLC that was released for the Wii U is included with the Deluxe Edition. Um, We also have Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild as one of our suggested games. Um, This game is a masterpiece. It's very gorgeous. Um... How many hours do you think just for the campaign? Breath of the Wild? Yeah. Um, well, Breath of the Wild is hard to put that way because it is completely open world. So you you, this, could, you could potentially finish the game in three hours, but you, then... Yeah. You wouldn't... If you want to experience the complete open world, it's over 100 hours. At least. There's, it's so massive. But you can start the game, get your weapons... And go right for the end game boss. Yep, straight again. You don't want to do this, but you can do it. And people have done it. People have done it. So that's the beauty of it is that you can make it as long or as, as short as you'd like. Technically, yeah. When they said they wanted to make an open world Zelda game, they couldn't have nailed it better than this. Except maybe adding a 
fishing mini game back. Stop. Because, you know, I spent a lot of time in Legend of Zelda Ocarina <laughs> of Time. Just fishing. fishing. Try those tears. He wants the uh, fishing simulator. And, you know, Twilight Princess added some really good fishing mechanics. As well. Oh, my God. <laughs> But yes, that was the game of the year last year when she mentioned Mario Odyssey being it, uh, the runner-up. It, it earned it. It really did. I mean, their their lineup for last year was really good, too. So Hard to top last year with this year. Yeah. Although uh, the other title that you mentioned, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, is incredible. This Sick. one has only been out a couple weeks, and this is easily the best fighter of the year. That's uh that's the other game we've been playing nonstop at our house is just nonstop. Yeah. Uh we have all characters unlocked because we have not stopped playing it. And the adventure mode World of Light is huge. And it's so cool. And it's so cool. The, so, I really I really Brothers. enjoyed how how they did that story be, because you have a map and you can you go around on a kind of like a trail type of deal. Yeah. And then you can encounter different fights or you can avoid them if you're not ready for them yet. Different types of scenarios. It's not just fight, fight, fight. It's a scenario to the fight strategy here. It's really good. Really well done. Also, uh, on Super Smash Bros., you can connect up to eight controllers to one Nintendo Switch Mm -hmm. and have the ultimate Smash Party. So. Mm -hmm. Which would be absolutely that. chaos, but absolutely ridiculously fun. You just got to make sure the, the map's big enough because... Oh, yeah. Some of those maps are really small. I'm wondering, <laughs> though, if the if AI, expand? if the system handles something like that. It will. Or do they just throw you all into Donkey Kong's place and like, there you go, eight people stand I'm, on that ledge. I think I think it also I think it also changes how the map goes. Yeah. Depending on how the size is. Because mm-hmm. I don't well, we think can, they're going to try to go... We can test that very soon. Oh. <laughs> and... It's uh, it's also a challenge for all parties involved too. So you can yep. have a lot of a lot of fun with your friends. Um, it gets pure chaos on that screen. Super Smash Brothers is a really really fun fighter. Once you have someone who just takes all the pokeballs and just throws them all at once, yeah, then you don't know what the hell's too. going on. <laughs> then you just see particles flying all over the screen, <laughs> and then your character gets lost, and then you find them, and then. They're it's falling. flying across. Uh, <laughs> my favorite is when when you see all the fights happen, and then I'm I think I'm in it, and then I just notice I'm falling off the map. I'm like, how did I get nope, there? You weren't in that fight. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just pure fun. You got to check it out if you're a fighter fan. You're gonna love this game. This is and any any age group can play this. Um, and there's there's definitely characters for every single kind of player. Uh, if you go for this more swords swordsman kind of guy versus there's you know Kirby, it, there's so many characters and there's definitely something for any any style of play. I mean, let's right. take it back and say not if you're a fighter guy, but if you're a Nintendo, you know connoisseur, this is every single like Nintendo fanboy's dream all fighting each other, and including yeah. some extra bits like yep. yeah, like the newly announced Persona Five character Oof. in the Fighter Pass, Joker. which is twenty five bucks for the Fighter Pass. It's five fighters. Joker from Persona 5 is the first one announced, so, so you're excited. getting franchises outside of the scope of Nintendo. I want to know what he sounds We wonder what the rest so will be. Excited. We'll find out. We are sure. Uh, what else do we have for games? Um, Starlink Battle for Atlas. Yes. Starlink Battle for Atlas is actually available on all three of the major ones, but we here at TSGG recommend that you get it on Nintendo Switch because it includes exclusive Star Fox missions, and when you buy the the kit, the starter kit, you that's how you buy this game. Well, it, you can buy it digitally and get everything that's in there on the eShop. And I believe that's 70 bucks. But there is also a physical version to this game. And this is really cool for anybody that likes collectibles. There's a starter kit that starts out at 75 bucks. It comes with a copy of the game, a starship which is, in Nintendo's case, the R-Wing from Star Fox, and you get a uh, physical collectible version of that, and they, they made some tech where the, the ship scans into the game, and it's really cool. As you connect it to the controller, it instantly is one-for-one ratio into the game. And you can mod it in real time. 
You can mod it in real time. That's that's the coolest thing to me is that you can move move various bits and pieces around on your ship, and you can actually see it change in real time. For the other consoles, they have this starter kit available, but it comes with the character Mason and his ship. And in the Nintendo version, you get the character Mason, you get the character Fox McCloud, and you get his ship Arwing. You do get a digital version of Mason's ship. So you get two ships, two characters, two weapons, and the game for 75 bucks. And this is the way you want to play it. I'm not going to go into the story, but when you compare the cinematics for the Xbox or PlayStation version to the Nintendo version, you will be missing things because as the Nintendo version cinematics play out, the Star Fox team is included in the cinematics and for the other versions, they're just excluded. So you just get various video edits and they are removed. This was a game that Ubisoft created and they actually said that when they were creating this game, Star Fox was already in their mind that they wanted this to happen. So Star Fox was kind of a central focus of this. So definitely get this game on Nintendo if you're looking for it. And it is a fantastic open world, open universe game. Action shooter. Uh, For that, I would say everyone. And next up for our everyone list, we have Pokemon Let's Go. And there's Eevee and Pikachu. Um, And this one also comes with an optional Pokeball Plus, which will include the character Mew, which is the only way to get Mew in-game. Um, and that's also usable with the Pokemon Go app, if you choose to play that, which is free a free game. But the Pokeball Plus runs about $50 extra. Um, but it's it's a really cool little mechanic. and It's a really cute controller. It's little, tiny. But cute. And it's... It's it's awesome. So if you want to have your your tactile experience of having a Pokeball in your little hand, you can yeah. do that. And now, you can carry the Pokemon with you. Yep. And they and they make noises and stuff. You can actually say their name and they'll be like, Yeah. And you'll be like, Yeah. But then, <laughs> so with the with the Pokeball, I'm pretty sure it's actually supposed to be thrown by how it's made, because it's made out of like a literal like rubbery ball material yeah, it does have the wrist strap you're supposed to actually let it go release it when That's you toss it terrifying it is <laughs> uh so briefly on pokemon let's go eevee let's go pikachu we do cover this game in great detail on a couple of our previous podcasts i encourage you all to listen to those to get a better insight on it but briefly this game is beautiful on the nintendo switch and it brings us back to the kanto region which was Generation 1 of Pokemon, Mm -hmm. and it's a fantastic game. This game is for everyone, and this is, I think, a staple for the Nintendo Switch. Yes, we are getting a full RPG Pokemon game next year, supposedly, so we'll have to stay tuned for that. But in the meantime... This, by no means, is just a holdover game. This is the full experience of a game, so definitely jump in there and check it out. And that's definitely for everybody, and it's a lot of fun for all ages. So, And it's really cute and pretty. It's, it's just a nice little game. Um, uh, what we got left? RPGs? Yep. For... Okay, before you go into that, I, I know we did mention Zelda Breath of the Wild. That is a huge game. A huge amount of hours and these last few games that we're going to talk about are for the naysayers of the nintendo switch there are a lot of them out there that don't think this is a serious console i beg to differ these titles right here are genuine full rpg experiences that you cannot get anywhere else for two out of the three <laughs> <laughs> um and also this is a great way to get, if you don't want your kids around and want to get them to go away somewhere for 80 plus hours, get these games. And keep them busy. Little Alexander will be playing this game forever. Yeah, yeah. It'll be little room dungeon kids. So what do we got? So we have, uh, first up is Octopath Traveler. A multiple path story RPG game based on a 2D, uh, 2D to 3D profile fighting style, turn-based, correct? Correct. It's, uh, 
it's also a really pretty game. I really enjoy how they did it. It, it feels nostalgic and old school because it's it's of like the eight sixteen bit type of look, but it's rendered in three D in the game. Um, the characters are very compelling. Everybody has their own really interesting storyline. Um, you can pick a favorite, and and you can play it different ways on the way through, if depending on whose perspective that you choose to start with. You're getting a full RPG experience with this game. To summarize it best graphically, I would say it is a Super Nintendo game on steroids. With beautiful music. Mm. Fantastic music. And there are many secrets, many bosses to find and fight, many different classes. You have everything that you could want in an RPG here ready for you to discover with a pretty great storyline and challenges after the storyline the main storyline is done too yeah like some of the most no, intense, don't, don't. intense intense stuff to do after the fact okay i'm not i thought you're going gonna, gonna, gonna somewhere with it. it all right no don't, no, 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 no. Don't, I'll just, say it. don't you dare say it. so uh, yes the huge huge game what's next um the next one is xenoblade chronicles 2 yes this is also a monstrous game for the Nintendo Switch. I was curious how this was going to play out. In the beginning, I believe there were a little bit of uh, screen problems with performance because of how large this game was, which have been smoothed out in a patch. So all is good. And remember, you're playing these games on your screens at home and also on the go so you're getting these full huge experiences on the go in the palm of your hands wherever you go so this is really good this is a hundred plus hour game you've got the classes here it's a little bit different because it's done by blades there whereas each blade has features and you can equip them but and this is a more of a action battle system but the colors of it and everything like that is a fantastic top five jrpg of the last couple of years um, and last but not least is Diablo 3, which, uh, it's a dungeon loot game, so you, the storyline itself is, is a little short, but you can play as many, many, many hours as you choose to, and it, it it's just so much fun. You can grind yeah. forever. Literally. The grind never stops in Diablo 3. This is the Eternal Collection on Nintendo Switch. Which means it's eternally longer. It's eternally longer. It comes with everything that was released, including the Necromancer pack. So you have all of the characters, all of the classes, and you have all of the endgame stuff, all of the online stuff. So you have different than what Diablo does now is they go on seasons. So whatever the current season that they're in, you are in as well. And they give you achievements and stuff that you must complete each and every season. So, like we said, this game does not end, and if you are a fan of the dungeon crawler, there is no other dungeon crawler than Diablo. And they do it best. to tie it in a little bit um, to our Amiibo discussion, there's coming up after Christmas, by the end of the year, there's a Diablo 3 character. I will let Kevin talk about it. The... Loot really Goblin Amiibo is going to be a GameStop exclusive Amiibo at fifteen ninety nine, And it's just so cute. <laughs> and that will summon a Loot Goblin in the game. Yes. You know about those Loot Goblins, uh, Jake? Yeah. I've also been to their, the what was it, the treasure? The, treasure world or yeah. whatever. I killed the King of Goblins, whatever the hell that thing was. Gave you some loot, didn't it? A lot of loot. Yeah. A lot of it that I junked. So much loot. Mm -hmm. So much fun. So that what wraps up Nintendo? Yep. Um, my final notes on this. Uh, games, Nintendo games will never really go down in price. Um, so And they will be significantly more expensive than the Xbox or, or the PS4 games. However, they're a lot of fun. They retain their value. And really, the biggest benefit is that you can take this game anywhere. You can take the Switch with you. You can take it. You can play it at home. You can play it on your lap. If you have a long commute, you can take it and play it anywhere. And that's just, it's just amazing. Just don't yep. game and drive. 
Yeah. Don't, don't game, game and drive. drive. Game responsibly. But Uber or train or if you're in between classes, if you're Just teaching class and want your kids if the classes to uh, watch, watch out movie. for uh, motion sickness. It is real. Okay. The final one for the evening is Sony. Jake, what do we got for Sony? So we're going by like uh, consoles here. There's there's a lot of deals that are going on right now, at least for like the the newer PS4, the Slim that's going on for two ninety nine. So basically three hundred plus tax, and you can get the Call of Duty Four Black Ops Slim one terabyte for about two ninety nine. That's a recommended one for me because I've I've went down that rabbit hole and I don't think I'm coming back up. We lost them. Yep. I didn't think I would, but I did. I'd recommend it for anybody who, you know, wants to fight and play in a toxic community. <clears throat> so there's It's the, a great game. It is, definitely. 100%. Uh, there's the PlayStation Pro. 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 Pro, Pro <laughs> that's being sold for... Uh, it's a terabyte for 400 bucks, And I think that one also has a Red Dead Redemption bundle that's recent. Yeah. So any suggestions for anybody who likes, you know... And it's important to note the Red Dead Redemption Two bundle is still at that base price of three ninety nine. Yeah, so there's no additional cost right. for that game. Exactly, that's it's a steal. Really, an incredible game as well, especially with the online that's coming out right now. So that would be the one that I'd yes. recommend. Red Dead Online is alive and well, and people are loving it. And there's a couple of VR kits that are coming uh, that are out the for the VR headset. There's a couple of different uh, combos and bundles you can get. One is the VR kit that includes the camera, the handheld move controllers, and a helm. Obviously, the helmet with a Borderlands Two and Beat Saber for two forty nine ninety nine. That's a great deal. That's a super good deal. Anybody who's ever seen us play Beat Sabers, we we look foolish, but boy, is it fun! It is a really fun game. Anybody I who literally played... played myself into a coma last night. About she did. That. It was. Uh, you want to work out, this will get you your cardio, oh, for yeah. sure. If you're ever a fan of one of the Guitar Hero rock band type games, this is definitely the game for you. All right. And then there's another VR uh, bundle that comes with Astrobot, which you were talking about Astrobot earlier. Astrobot Rescue Mission is a platforming game. Uh, what I've seen of it, it is being called the platformer of the generation, and it is a must-play for any PlayStation VR owner. And also moss. Yes. A moss is a, it's, you are watching a little mouse move around, but the game is told through sign language. It's a really unique, uh, you know, play on the game. Very beautiful, very stunning. Uh, I'd recommend getting that one, but it doesn't come with the move controllers. They are sold separately. So the move controllers are about $99 for the pair. The two pack. Yep. Yeah. And I'm, honestly, if you're playing a game like that, you're going to need them. So You definitely need them. It's going to basically cost you a little bit more. but I think in that bundle, what they were trying to do was get the VR to people at the lowest cost possible. Right. And for those of you that don't follow the industry like we do, when the PlayStation 3 came out, they went and tried doing all these different motion type controls and everything, and the Move controllers actually came out last gen. So for this bundle they're saying for people that already own the move controllers you don't need to buy the bundle that comes with move controllers because you don't need four of them so if you still have them and you don't have the vr yet this is the easiest way for you to get into vr at the lowest cost possible and they're giving you two fantastic games so if you already have the handheld playstation move controllers and you've been wanting to jump into vr there's a bundle out there that's available for you and we Highly recommend that you jump in. And most of these come with the newer, uh, the newer helmet. The the yeah, the two point yep. uh, VR headset allows four uh, K HDR pass through, which the previous model did not. So it would look much, much more pretty. Yeah. And you know the 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 normal prices that you see here. Obviously, if you go to a certain store, you might find them a little bit cheaper. It just depends on where you look. They do have, obviously, the extra PlayStation 4 controllers for the, the family with the many people for $49. That's the normal. And Most I, of the time, you can find uh, PS4 controllers around 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. so we recommend checking your local retailers to see what you can find. 
Right, you could find them. You could find them anywhere, and they they always have different types of brands that you can look for that might be something that's more to your liking. Uh, they are announcing and making the scuffs for PlayStation Four, but they cost a lot more. And those uh, run two hundred bucks. Yep, and they look completely different and feel completely different. Those are available now. Yep, uh, and uh, for your PS, uh, for the people who want to play online, you want to get your PlayStation Plus. Yes, that's that's the online services mm-hmm. PS Plus. They have the three month membership, which is twenty four ninety nine, and the twelve month membership, which is fifty nine ninety nine. A recommended staple for anybody who has a PlayStation. You need it for any type of gameplay online, and it's also useful. Uh, in in my opinion, it's useful just to have to get the two games that come with it. Most of the time, you'll get a a really good game followed by a game that they kind of want to push to let you know that's out there. And not only that, they also offer a lot of discounts. For PS Plus members, mm-hmm. um, so some games are significantly marked down if you have that as your membership your member, status. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Xbox Live Gold and PS Plus are very very similar. Yep. Uh, one thing to note for PS Plus is currently they offer you two games a month for PlayStation Four, PlayStation Three, and PS Vita. Starting in March of 2019. They will no longer offer PlayStation Vita games, nor will they offer PlayStation 3 games. They will only be PlayStation 4 going forward. Very important. Which makes sense. I mean, the the other games, game systems are long gone. They're phasing them out, yeah. And of course, they have a similar similar thing to Xbox's, uh, Xbox's Game Pass. They have the PlayStation. They do have PS Now. Right. Which is an online service up until recently, however. The PS Now subscription was only streaming the games. Because many years ago they bought the service Gaikai. And is a huge, huge server-based system that is too technical for this show. And we went and they went and put their library of games out there on different devices. But they've, they've... they went really big with it, but they've scaled it back. Now what you get is the they're, they see what Game Pass is doing, and they're trying to bring it in. It's and playing catch-up it now. Yeah, they're what playing catch-up now. They were, they were too ambitious, and now they're bringing it back. Yeah, this is all about the catch-up game, which, I mean, to be fair, I'm not going to say buy it now, but it's one thing to recommend it because it's going to change exuberantly. If you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber... Exuber. You can get PS Now at a discounted rate for a year, and it's actually cheaper than Game Pass. So that's only for PS Plus mm. subscribers. Which, again, runs you $60 a year. Right. Unless, of course, you keep your eyes peeled for the discounts that they have, usually around Black Friday sales. And they are stackable. So if you do want to have that as your system of choice and you want to invest in it, I would say grab a couple of them. They yeah. do it. They do stack. They are stackable, and that is usually the only time of the year you are going to see that price. Back to PS Now for just one more moment. You can stream the games. A very strong broadband connection is required to stream them Yikes. because there is so much data there. And they just, like in the last few weeks, have begun the downloading of the game so that you don't have to stream it but the list is very small so if you're interested in that go check it out read all about it they detail it very clearly for you you're gonna but like i said before and and not to repeat myself you're going to see plenty of changes when i when it comes out because at this moment we've already we've talked about this many a times playstation now has to play the catch-up game with how xbox is moving forward you're going to see a lot of the similar things that they have starting to either mirror or become better than the other company because that's how. In the future, this is the fight they're going to be having. Mm. But for now, let's get to some games. There's a plenty of games. You know, you had the list, Kevin. So I have a <laughs> list. This is something Sony does that I adore. The They've been doing hits. this since the PlayStation 2 days, I believe. I don't think they did it in PlayStation 1. They definitely did. Did they do it in oh, one? Hell yes, they did. The PlayStation Hits. I used to have the Final Formerly Fantasy VII Greatest Hits. PlayStation Classics, I think? I want to say... Or was it always Hits? I want to say PlayStation 3 had Classics, and then... They switched every, it up, right? Yeah. And then they brought back the Hits. Mm-hmm. So the Hits 
are great games for a great price. And these are all PlayStation 4 games, and these were all at one point full full price games, which on the hits line, you will see PlayStation hits right on the box art. It's a big red banner. And all of these games cost nineteen ninety nine. So this is a great way if you're getting little Susie her first PlayStation four and yeah, you just shelled out two hundred bucks and you're like, Well, I don't really have much left for games. Hit up the PlayStation hits classics and twenty bucks you can get a these are games. tried and true games that are worth getting. Yeah. Oh yeah. So here's what we have so far. We have Little Big Planet Three. Oh my god, yes. Great game. Everyone this is a platformer, platformer builder game. One hundred percent family friendly and also one of the best games for you to have a a wild time either building your own little worlds for people to go through or for people to for you to experience. I remember playing this with my family. The I think it was just Little Big Planet on PlayStation 3. It was so fun. When it first came out, and we were downloading, at the time, People's Creations, which is awesome. And yeah. this was very new. And we were on this skateboard, and we go down this hill, and the way that the animations were and everything, like Sack Boy and the friends, they just like start flailing about, and we're going all over the place. We could not stop laughing. We were just having a great time. It was so much fun. Little Big Planet, can't stress it enough. If you have a family-oriented gaming, and and relatively low frustration level too. Yeah, this is this is just pure fun, pure family fun. You're gonna love it. Lots of laughter. The Last of Us remastered. Not not, not family <laughs> friendly. Now to go the pendulum the other However, direction. <laughs> One of the best story-driven games to date that has to do with any type of zombie apocalypse. Hands so, down. And somewhat realistic zombie apocalypse as well. This. Cordyceps. Yes. This is the second best video game story I have ever seen. What, second best. What's your first best? This was the first best <laughs> all the way until. The first best. The bestest. The bestest. This was the first bestest story I had ever seen <laughs> in a video game, all the way up until just a couple of months ago. Not Spider-Man. Yes. God. Spider-Man. Spider-Man is the best video game story I have ever seen. But, the, what, the, I mean, okay, okay, so Spider-Man, I'm a huge fan. Don't. We're not going into that right now. No. We'll talk about that later. But, yeah, but. We're going to okay, talk about so, it later. So The Last of Us. <laughs> the Last of Us Remastered. Looks great. It's fantastic. It hits it's you remastered feels. because smooth, it was story. a PlayStation 3 end of the life game. So they remastered it and threw it out on the PlayStation 4, and it's fantastic. Also a good uh, a good, a good recommendation for getting it because The Last of Us 2 is on the horizon. The Last of Us 2 is at some point going to release. <laughs> it's sometime it's gonna going to be here. Be great. So you're going to want to catch up. Ratchet and Clank. Any of those games. Insomniac are fun. Games. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End. Also a great He's game. always just having a bad day. Every single time. Like, it's no joke. But if, for, for mid level shooting puzzle, um, well, like, I guess you have to figure stuff out how to get around. Um, some platforming, very, very good story driven games. They're some of my favorites, and I'm not really good at those kind of games. But I very much enjoyed the story. It's treasure hunting. Um, and Nathan if, Drake's always having a bad day. If always. you don't know what Uncharted is, think Indiana Jones mixed with Tomb Raider. And there you go. Yeah. And if you don't know what those are. I mean, if you really just want to get the uh, the story driven YouTube, there's a couple of YouTube channels that have basically cut all the uh, gameplay out and just have made it into a movie. Yeah. Which I think, is fun too. I think Uncharted 4 had one of the better endings in my Okay, opinion. we're not going there. Definitely not going there. Next up is Bloodborne. Not kid friendly. Definitely not. Welcome to Dark Souls Light. This is a PlayStation exclusive mm. made by From Software. Yes. And this is Dark Souls for PlayStation only. Yes. It's so it's you don't it's, know Dark Souls. It's a very fast paced Dark Souls. There is no there's no shield, there's nothing like that. No no actual I mean there is magic there but not enough. It's literally just fast paced Bloodborne. I mean Dark Souls. Darkborn. Uh, 
Souls. Fourth ball. Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> Next up, Dying Light, the following. Never played it, so I don't have I'm any. I'm not either. Uh, then we have the Uncharted Collection, the mm. Nathan Drake Collection. Now, this is all three of the other titles. Those of you who didn't uh, like, who didn't catch the first time we recommended Uncharted 4, you should probably play this first. Yes. So these three games came out on PlayStation 3. All of them got the remaster treatment. They look stunning on PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. I believe they have enhancements for PlayStation 4 Pro. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that they do. And listen, you're getting all four Uncharted games for 40 bucks. That's you cannot beat that deal. No. And again, I cannot stress it enough. These are very fun. They are pretty much suited for any teenager up audience. Uh, great story driven games. Yeah, it's got a lot of levity too. There's there's a lot of different like you you go through a lot of different uh like a range of feels yeah, that you, really. But they're they were a lot of fun. Yeah, and the all four of these games are created by Naughty Dog, who also made The Last of who Us. Also made The Last of Us. Yeah, I and caught that. These thunder. are a first party Sony property. Initially made Crash Bandicoot, and might have had a time these games in the fourth game. They did. It was hilarious. Yep. These games sell PlayStation units. So they do. If you're getting a new PlayStation Four and you don't know where to start, start with these titles because these are the ones that made this generation and to lastly get through the list we have yakuza zero until dawn and infamous second son by sucker punch studios who are going to be making a wonderful game in the future we all hope it comes out called ghost of tsushima uh-huh. but we will talk about that at another time you cannot get that <laughs> as right as far now. as our christmas stuff our holiday special gift giving guide um, it just really depends on what you, what kind of value you're looking for. Each has their own benefits and drawbacks. Uh, if you like portable, you cannot go wrong with the Switch. Um, but they are expensive. They it, the peripherals are going to set you back some cash. But it's portable. So if you awesome. if you want to make little Jim Bob happy, here are the these are the types of ways to do so. Right. This so- is. A- Go ahead. This is a well. This is a good opportunity to you know show the kids what what you went through. You played games. Show them. It's going to yeah. be fun and the best. As you can see, there are a lot of video games to choose from. So many. There are different consoles to choose from. What we think is best is to choose the console. Make sure you get that online service for that console and then go through some of these games in the lists, and that's where you should begin your video gaming journey. I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you guys for being a part of the show. Thank you very much, Kaylee, for this idea. I had a lot of fun doing this. This Mm. was awesome. Can't wait to do it again next year. We will have it up bright and early so that you can get your shopping done. Hopefully not last minute next year. Hey, they still have a week. One week left. Challenge accepted. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a good night. Have a good night.